issue a little caveat that today the homily will be a little longer than usual. The homily today will comprise something about the feast we are celebrating, which is a feast of the Holy Family. And then, as has been directed by the Archbishop, I will touch a little on the, the document Fiducia Supplicants, which was released by the Holy Father about a week or so ago, which document talks about the various kinds of blessings and the blessing of homosexual couples. My dear brothers, my dear sisters in Christ, today we celebrate the Feast of the Holy Family. This feast is celebrated each year on the Sunday after Christmas Day, or where there is no Sunday, it is celebrated on the 30th of December. The feast started somewhere in Canada in the 19th century. It took a hundred years for this feast to spread to the entire church. This feast which we celebrate highlights the Holy Family of Nazareth, that is the family of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. This family is presented to us as the true model of Christian family. The church celebrates this feast to call attention to the Holy Family. The Holy Family of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. So that by reflecting on their life and virtues, we may imitate their good examples. The family is a very important unit in society. A very important unit which must be protected from corruption at all costs. The family must be preserved from any form of vice. And we must do well to take pains to protect the dignity and the value of family life. The Second Vatican Council, in the document Guardium Espes, paragraph 52, describes the family as the foundation of society and the school of humanity. The family is the place where children are introduced to social life, where language, culture, knowledge, values, and institutions are transmitted and learned. You can confer familiaris consult you. Society can only be revitalized when family systems are strengthened. Family has been defined variously by different schools of thought. One very common definition of family is a group of people related by blood, marriage, or adoption. Some people also believe that a family should be a group of people who love and care for each other. Whatever definition that is preferred, the family must always be recognized as God's gift to humanity. The family, according to Pope John Paul II, is the fundamental community of society. It is the natural, primary cell of human society. The family is the basic cell of society. Any attack on the family or family life is therefore an attack on humanity. 
A wounded family is a wounded society. In fact, everything we can ever think of, good or bad, can be traced to the family. When we see a child misbehave and we ask, who are your parents? There is no stronger message than this question. In other words, we are seeking to find out who raised you? Who are your parents and how did they form you? And so the litmus test for assessing the performance of the family is society. If you want to see how family life is faring, look at society. Society is a reflection of the family. Anytime we talk about corrupt leaders, greedy people, envious, promiscuous people, we are invariably admitting a certain failure or defect in the family system. It is therefore germane and providential that each year we celebrate this feast which allows us to reflect on our own individual families. Today, as we celebrate the Feast of the Holy Family, let us look into our families, our own families, and make resolutions to live and promote proper and better family systems, to embrace sound doctrines, philosophies, and healthy practices. If we are unable to do this, what happens, according to Pope John Paul II of Blessed Memory, is that genuine social life collapses. It collapses into a heap of privatized interests. So when the family system collapses, what happens is each one for himself, God for us all. And so we find people who are more interested in personal pleasure, material prosperity, and naked power. These are the words of the late Pope John Paul II. Families must rise to the invitation of Pope Francis to rediscover the value of the family as the source and origin of social order. A home where there is love. A home where there is love and respect, care and concern, gives rise to happy and responsible children. Here we are talking about a home where there is proper interaction between husband and wife, parents, and children. A home where responsibilities and roles are played. The good books. The good book, according to Sirach, chapter 3, verse 2, tells us that God has set a father over his children. Fathers, take care of the home. Children grow to take care of their parents. Scripture has given the authority of the home to parents to not only take care of the physical development of their children, but also their spiritual, emotional, and psychosocial development. The father is the head, the priest of the family, the domestic church. He has a right to bless, to teach, to instruct in good values and morals. When men run away from this responsibility, we see most of the problems we see in the modern world. So most of the problems we encounter are as a result of Men, women, parents, 
shirking their parental duties. In our gospel passage, we encountered Simeon and Anna. Simeon and Anna, in tune with the Holy Spirit, conferred blessings on the baby Jesus. Parents who are in tune with the Holy Spirit bring blessings not only upon themselves, but also upon their children and upon the family as a whole. One of the very enormous challenges that the institution of family faces recently is the attempt to change the laws of God for marriage. In Genesis, we read, God created man in his, in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it. Confess Genesis chapter 1, 26 to 28. We also read in Genesis chapter 2, verse 18 and 21 to 24. Therefore, a man leaves his father and his mother and cleaves to his wife, and they become one flesh. And so the catechism of the Catholic Church affirms that God himself is the author of marriage. The Catechism goes on to say that the vocation of marriage is written in the very nature of man and woman as they came from the hand of the Creator. Any law or any attempt, therefore, that seeks to overturn the natural order must be regarded as an attack on the marriage institution and must therefore be rejected. Same-sex same sex marriage, same-sex unions, polygamous marriages or unions are unjust and must be rejected. We must, in right conscience, reject any such attempt. Peter in the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5, verse 29, we say to the high priest and the Jewish council in Jerusalem, we must obey God rather than men. God is good all the time. and all the time. God is good. And so we must obey God rather than men. Talking about God's design for marriage and the attempts by men to overturn the natural order, let us now take a dive into the recent declaration, Fiducia Supplicans, on the pastoral meaning of blessings, which was released by His Holiness Pope Francis on Monday the 18th of December. The declaration, which created confusion, anxiety, controversies and despair among the Catholic fraternity. Contrary to many interpretations, affirms the traditional doctrine of the church about marriage. The declaration affirms the traditional doctrine of the church about declaration defined And in the 